you know, we talk so much about Silicon Valley, all this stuff about the U.S. tech scene, but um, right. have you noticed this other force that's kind of like shaking things up out there? Yeah. It's India's startup ecosystem. It's really interesting. And it's not just a buzzword. No. I was going through this excerpt, India's startup symphony. No. Nope. And wow, there is so much data in here. It's incredible. Interesting. This is the real deal, I'm telling you. Yeah, what's fascinating to me. We're talking like a 3x increase in AI funding just this year. I think what I'm seeing that's really interesting is that... FinTech is going way beyond the hype. Yeah. It's like real world impact now. They're not just riding the wave. Then the ambition. They're creating their own waves. It's global. You could tell they're ready to take center stage. Yeah. Especially in deep tech. Yeah. When it comes to deep tech, India's not messing around. No. It's really interesting to see this shift. Yeah. Because it used to be that they were kind of followers in the tech world. Right. But now they're really becoming leaders. Yeah. In AI, machine learning, blockchain, you name it. Absolutely. They're not just talking about the future either. Right. These technologies are already having an impact. It's really interesting stuff. Like right now. Yeah, and I think a lot of it has to do with the fact that they have such a massive tech-savvy population. Absolutely, and a rapidly growing digital economy. Oh, yeah. And you can't ignore the government's role in all of this. Yeah, they're really supporting these startups. Actively supporting them. It's amazing, and it's not just talk. Right. Did you see that $1.3 billion yeah. poured into Indian AI startups this year alone? That is a huge vote of confidence. That says a lot. It really does. It makes you really think about companies like Misho. Yeah. I don't know if you're familiar with them, but they're using AI to change online shopping. Interesting. How so? They're making the whole supply chain more efficient. Wow. The thing is, they're not just solving problems in India. Right. These solutions they're coming up with, yeah. they could be scaled globally. That's huge. It's incredible what they're doing. Misho is a great example then. Yeah of how Indian startups are using AI to solve real-world problems. Exactly. And it just makes you think, right? Yeah. What could India's advancements in AI and deep tech mean for industries worldwide? It's exciting to think about. Yeah, this is huge. But, you know, this excerpt doesn't stop there. It throws us right into this other wave that's happening. Yeah. Fintech. Fintech, right. And it's not just about digitizing financial services anymore. What's interesting is they're reinventing. They're reinventing the way we think about finance. Exactly. Digital payments, lending, banking. The whole game's changing. Oh, that's incredible. And you know what's driving a lot of this? What? The unified payments interface. The what? Or UPI, as everyone calls it. UPI? That sounds like some kind of tech acronym from another planet. I know, right? Break it down for me. What is that? Okay, so imagine this. Okay. You can send money between banks instantly. Wow. You can pay for stuff at a local shop. Oh. You can even send money to someone in another city. No way. All by scanning a QR code. What? Or just using your phone. Get out of here. That's UPI in a nutshell. So that's like super convenient. Oh, yeah. But it's more than just convenience, right? It's huge. This has brought millions of people into the formal financial system. I know, it's incredible. And remember that $5.8 in fintech funding we talked about? Oh, yeah. That's not just a random number. That's a big deal. That's because of UPI. I think that's a big reason why investors are so excited about yeah, yeah. India. Like, everyone's watching this right now. Oh, yeah. UPI is huge. And the impact, Yeah. it's not just limited to India. What do you mean? Other countries are actually looking at UPI now. Really? To figure out their own digital payment systems. Wow, so they're like a model for the rest of the world. It's a great example of how India is leading the way. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, so we've got this global hub for fintech. And it makes me think about this other point from the excerpt. Okay. Indian startups, they're thinking globally. It's really interesting. They're not just focused on what's happening in India. It's a global mindset. They want to be everywhere. Or they're not just trying to dominate the domestic market either. Exactly, and they're forming all these partnerships. Yeah, with companies around the world. Especially with companies in the U.S. Yeah, we're seeing a lot of that. And you see a company like Flipkart, they're huge in India. Right. And they're collaborating with these U.S. tech startups. It's really smart. It's really interesting. Because it gives them access to new markets. It's like this whole new chapter. And new technologies, new expertise. In the startup world. And it makes sense, right? Oh, absolutely. If you can partner with these companies that are already established here in the U.S. It can really accelerate your growth. Yeah, but what's in it for the U.S. companies? Well, think about it. Like, why do they care? 
they get to enter a market like India. That makes sense. Which is growing so quickly. And, and tons of digital users. And they get access to this amazing workforce. Oh, it's a win-win. It is. It's a win-win for everybody. And it's like you were saying, yeah. Flipkart, they're using this to improve their logistics. Exactly. And their customer experience. It's about using innovation to serve your customers better. That's really what it's all about, right? And it's interesting. It is. And you know what else is really interesting? What's that? This whole idea of remote work. Oh, yeah. That's huge right now. It is. And Indian startups are embracing it. They're all over it. Hybrid models, everything. And why not? If you can hire the best people, exactly. you're not limited by geography anymore. And you get access to this huge global talent pool. It just opens up so many possibilities. And it gives startups a lot of advantages. Like what? Well, they can find people with specialized skills. Okay. That might be hard to find in India. Yeah. Or they might be more expensive in India. Right. And it's not just about the skills, right? right. It's about building teams with people from all these different backgrounds. Absolutely. From a perspective. So it's like gold for innovation. That diversity of thought. Exactly. You get so many different approaches to problem solving. I know. And let's not forget the cost savings. Oh, yeah. That's a big one. When you can cut down on office space and all that. It's a huge advantage for startups. So it really is a win-win for everyone. It really is. The excerpt actually called out Zoho and Freshworks oh, yeah. as companies that are doing this really well. I'm glad they mentioned them. What are they doing that's so special? Well, they've really embraced this whole remote work culture. <laughs> they've invested in the technology, the infrastructure. So their employees can actually do their jobs from anywhere. And they haven't just slapped it together either. Okay. They've created these flexible work environments. Where people actually want to work. They're putting employee well-being first. It's impressive. So they figured out how to make it work. They really have. And it seems like there are some good lessons here it's for just... other companies to learn from. Not just in India. Exactly. This applies everywhere. So we've got this picture of India's startup scene. And it's incredible. It's this really interesting mix. It's deep tech. They've got the fintech innovation. Global mindset. And they're embracing remote work. Where does this all lead? I think they're on a really interesting trajectory. Like what's next? I'm seeing explosive growth in the coming years. You think so? This isn't just about the present. Okay. This excerpt is showing us the future. What do you mean? India has what it takes to be a global tech hub. Really? Especially in AI, fintech. Okay. And soft. You know what that is, right? Refresh my memory. Software as a service, it's a business model where you offer software on a subscription basis over the internet. Oh, right. Like those project management tools. Exactly. So we're not just talking about some regional thing. Uber. This is India becoming a major yeah. play on the world stage. Absolutely. But it can't all be easy. Right. But... No, there are challenges. Like what? Infrastructure is a big one. Okay. They've made progress but they need to keep investing. In things like internet and logistics. Yeah, if they want to keep up with this growth. It's like building a skyscraper. Exactly. That you need a strong foundation. And then there's talent retention. Oh, yeah, that's a big one. Because yeah. as these startups become more successful. They're competing with everyone else. Global companies, everybody. It's tough, but, you know. It's a good problem to have in a way. I guess so. It's been amazing learning about all of this. Me too. I had no idea how dynamic and ambitious India's tech world was. It's pretty impressive. What a deep dive this has been. It really has. And for everyone listening, here's something to think about. As India's startup scene keeps growing, how is it going to change the global tech landscape? What opportunities and challenges does this create for us? It's an exciting time to be paying attention, that's for sure. I'll be keeping my eye on India, that's for sure. Me too. Until next time.